So this video lesson is all about what it means to write equations and expressions from both verbal models and word problems. Now we're not getting quite to the point of solving these yet. Um, some will do some solving using mental math, but not into the actual uh, procedure for solving more complicated equations. We're just looking at writing them and how we write them. But first, before we can write them, we have to understand what they are. And before we get into what they are, we need to have one definition real quick a variable and a variable are things like x z b etc they're just letters that stand in for numbers they represent some unknown number but it's still important to what we're talking about or what we're solving so we use the letter to stand in for that number And you'll see what I mean here when I give you a few examples of expressions. Expressions are things like x plus 5, 12 minus x, 3x plus 4, x divided by 9, and 27. The first four of these all involve variables x. That x represents some unknown number. We're not sure what it is now. It could be any number. It could be a specific number, but it represents a number. And then 27, of course has no variable. And that leads to the definition of expressions, which is an expression is just a combination of numbers, variables, and operations. Operations being addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, exponentiation, etc. Uh, and so any combination like this, where it is just numbers, variables, and their operations, is called an expression. Now if we add an equal sign to it and we get things like x plus 5 equals 6, 12 minus x equals 12, 3x plus 4 equals negative 5, x divided by 9 equals negative 2.5, and 27 equals x, we've changed what we're looking at. Now instead of just having an expression, we have one expression equal to a number or another expression. And that really is just the definition of an equation. An equation is what you get when you set two expressions equal to each other. Whereas in the expression x plus 5, x could really represent any number at all. In x plus 5 equals 6, x now represents a very specific number. There is only one number that we can substitute in for x so that x plus 5 equals 6. And the only number that can be is 1. In this case, x has to equal 1 because it's the only number that you can add 5 to and get 6. Uh, but we'll get back to more of that later. Right now, we just want to understand that an expression is just made up of numbers, variables, and operations, similar to these ones up here. You can have multiple variables. You can have no variables. You can have only variables. You can have only numbers, but you have to have an oper Or you can um, have no operations is it, in terms of something like 27, but you need to have some of these. And when an equals sign sets two expressions equal to each other, you create an equation. Um, so let's go ahead and look at some ways of writing an expression or an equation from a verbal model. Now what is a verbal model? Verbal models are things like two less than a number, the product of a number in negative seven, nine more than a number, eight divided by a number, a short phrase of words that describes some operation that we're about to do. Uh, in this case, we can see that there is a common phrase to each of these verbal models. In each of these verbal models, we see the phrase a number. And when we see a phrase like a number, we're not entirely sure what number that is. It's not an invitation for us to make up a number and put it in there. We need to find a way of representing that any number at all could go into that expression. And to do that, we go back to the variable, which again is just a letter used to represent an unknown number. So when we get to actually writing down what these expressions mean, two less than a number. Well, we have our number, let's say x, and we want 2 less than a number, so that would be x minus 2. The product of a number and negative 7. I'm going to write it like this with a dot in the middle to represent multiplication. Then, of course, we have 9 more than a number and 8 divided by a number. That represents these expressions.
So based on that, where a number just represents a variable and then you use the rest of the information in a verbal model to write a short expression, see what you can do with these expressions. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can write down these expressions, remembering that the phrase a number always represents a variable. Well, hopefully we were able to at the very least see that in each of these you're going to use a variable it can be any letter that you want I'm going to use X we have X for a number but we have seven less than a number so X minus seven three times a number gives you three times X or we can write for a variable just three X three more than a number or three more than twice a number this is a little bit more complicated we have first twice a number so two times X now we have three more than that twice the number. So we need to add three. Two x plus three. And finally, the difference of nine and a number. Now we can do this really in, in either direction because we don't have a specific uh, context to understand, but the difference of a nine and a number is nine minus n. If you wrote n minus nine, that is, that is true. That is the difference between a number and nine. Um, without the context, we can't be entirely sure, but if we follow the order of the verbal model, it is 9 minus n. So I just want to take a second, we're not going to stay here long, to look at some common phrases that are used to represent addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division in verbal models particularly. These are things that you've seen throughout the years, um, but just is worth going back and taking a review of these. The addition phrases are here. Subtraction, these are usually pretty easy to see, addition and subtraction. Multiplication and division, a bit more difficult at times, um, but again, as long as you look for some key phrases, you should be able to f determine what kind of operation am I looking at. Um, but writing from verbal models is one thing. More often, what we're going to be asked to do is write from a word problem. So let's take a look at this one. During the last parts of its flight, a hot air balloon begins descending to the ground. So I'm going to draw a picture here so we can see what's going on. A uh, hot air balloon. And during part of its flight, it begins descending. We'll say the ground is down here. After, after several minutes, it has dropped 200 feet. So it has dropped by 200. Down to an altitude of 1,200. what was its altitude before it began to drop. So we're looking at what is here. Now before we go ahead and solve it, just add the 200 back to 1200 and get to 1400, which is true, we need to look at what does this represent? What if I wanted to write an equation here? How can I represent this in an equation, in a mathematical sentence? Well, there are really three steps that we have to writing an equation from the word problem. And if you follow these three steps, you'll be able to write an equation from nearly any word problem you come across. First is identify your variable. What is your unknown? What are we trying to find? Because if we write an equation from a word problem, we're really looking at solving for some unknown value. Our unknown value in this case is what is the hot air's altitude before dropping? So our variable, which we'll say is x, represents the altitude of the balloon before it began descending. So in anything that we talk about with this word problem from now on, we know that when we talk about the original altitude of the balloon, it's going to be represented by this variable x. Step two, describe what's happening in words. Write a verbal model for the equation. Now, it's not going to be quite as simple as the verbal models we saw before, but let's take a look at this word problem one more time. We're starting out at a certain elevation. So let's say the original altitude. After we go through the original altitude, ALT, we drop by a certain amount of feet. The original altitude minus what we drop gives us our current altitude. One more time, where we started with the hot air balloon minus the number of feet that we dropped gives us the altitude currently. So our verbal model is original altitude minus distance it dropped equals current altitude. And from that, we can substitute in the numbers and the variables that we know and create an equation. Original altitude is x. 
minus the 200 it dropped equals 1200. And then for mental math, we can see that in this case, x has to equal 1400. So one more time, the three steps of writing an equation for a word problem are identifying the variable, describing what's happening in words, and substituting the variable in numbers that you know. Eventually, we will get to solving. Today, we will only be solving by mental math. Uh, but go ahead and pause the video and see what you can come up with for these two word problems here. There's another set of two after these, but see what you can do for these using those three steps. Identify the variable, write a verbal model that describes the situation, and substitute in what you know. So looking at the first one here, a truck is transporting gallon jugs of water. Well, at the end, we can see that our question, how many jugs were lost during the trip, means that the number of jugs lost is going to be our variable. In that case, if we look at... Oh, I see I made a mistake here. shouldn't be original. It should be original. If we look at the question itself, we can see that our original number of jugs, which is 200, minus the number of, uh, that, was, that were lost during transport have to equal the number of jugs remaining. Uh, now, in this case, we know the original number to be 200. We know the number remaining to be 165. But we don't know the number lost. So 200 minus x equals 165. So mental math gives us that we've lost 35 jugs. For number two, the tallest stalagmite in a certain cave is underwater in a pool 55 feet deep. Oh, a lot of uh, misspellings here. If the distance between the tip of the stalagmite and the surface of the water is 41 feet, how tall is the stalagmite? Well, we know then in that case that the height of the stalagmite is the unknown. We know that the height of that stalagmite plus the distance to the surface has got to be equal to the depth of the pool, that is, from the bottom to the top. So x, the height, plus the distance to the surface, 41, is equal to 55. So mental math gives us x equals 14. Go ahead and pause the video again. See what you can do with these two word problems. Again, writing what is your variable. Describe the equation in the scenario using a verbal model. And finally, substituting in what you know. Well, for the third one, the one where Gunter is setting up a buoy, the question at the end gives us our variable. How deep is the lake? Well, if he ties 300 feet of rope to the anchor and drops it, then the depth of the lake plus the remaining amount of rope has to equal the total because the rope is either in the lake or above the lake. In this case, the depth is x, the remaining rope is 55 feet, and 300 is the total amount of rope that we have. In that case, x is equal to 245 feet, which gives us the depth of the lake. For Ingrid's room painting, if every room require, if five rooms require 15 gallons of paint, our question then is, how much paint is needed for one room? Well, in any case, no matter what we're doing, the number of rooms times the amount of paint per room gives us the total amount of paint needed. So five times x is equal to 15, and in this case, x is equal to three gallons needed per room. Again, quick review to write a Word pro to take a word problem and turn it into an equation, we follow three steps. First, we have to know what our variable is, what is the unknown. Two, we have to describe what is happening in words using a verbal model for the equation that describes exactly what's going on in the scenario in a few short phrases. And finally, substituting in the variables that you know and the numbers.